Hi, my name is Scott Evans. I'm the executive producer on the Battlefield franchise. So as executive producer, I'm uh, responsible for uh, guiding the franchise as well as guiding the individual products within the franchise. Day to day these days, I'm very focused on Battlefield 2, the uh, full sequel to uh, Battlefield 1942-2002 game of the year. Before Battlefield, I was working on the Lord of the Rings franchise on the Two Towers for a couple of years. Uh, before that, I was working uh, in EAP on several titles, including the original Medal of Honor, uh, System Shock 2, and some other titles. Well, the game looks amazing. As we get closer and closer to final, it's just really coming together really well. For me, the funnest thing to do in the game is to be the Battlefield Commander. I love to just sit on top of this digital chain of command and using voice over IP, issuing orders out to my squad leaders, calling artillery strikes, putting up drones, spy drones, and putting up satellite sweeps. It's all really fun to do. I do okay. I get out there and I run around usually as an engineer. I like to use the vehicles and uh, like to uh, uh, put down a C4 and, uh, and trap people and, and blow stuff up. That's what I'm all about. Definitely one of the one of the key attractions to uh, Battlefield is it's easy to use. You can just pick it up. You know, it has arcade feel and mechanics to it. We want to definitely carry that forward to Battlefield 2, but at the same time offer additional layers of complexity and depth for the pro players to uh, get in there and challenge themselves with and uncover. Battlefield 2 engine, as you know, is built um, brand new from the ground up. It's really offering some amazing visuals, and that's being built by the original Battlefield 1942 team. Uh, out of Stockholm, Sweden. So it's all new technology, all built from the ground up. And the technology is, is the idea is, is trying to deliver very large worlds at a very high level of detail with, as you know, dozens and dozens of players running around shooting things, blowing things up. So it's really a pretty incredible technical achievement to have these very realistic worlds um, in, in a very large map, about four kilometers square, all loaded into memory at the same time with all this stuff going on in the background. Accessibility is one of the one of our um, areas of focus for Battlefield 2. We really want to uh, allow people with a broad variety of broad spectrum of hardware configurations to be able to run the game. So what we're doing for the folks who have a lower end system is we're putting a lot of dials and knobs in the front end to turn graphic detail uh, down, uh, ratchet it back so they can get a really good, strong frame rate experience uh, on their system. The power users that want to get a really uh, full experience and turn every dot, every dial and knob all the way to the top are going to go out there and probably build a uh, P4 3 gigahertz with a GeForce FX equivalent or higher with a couple of gigs of RAM. Battlefield 2 is a T-rated game and we want to keep it there. Uh, we want the game to be as accessible as possible to a wide audience and we feel that we can deliver a, a sense of all-out war and online combat without kind of the gory details that a lot of other products are building into. Punkbuster really is our solution. I mean, it's done really well for us with Battlefield 1942 and Battlefield Vietnam. Uh, so we're going to continue to use Punkbuster and Battlefield 2 and we think that really gives us a, a bulletproof strategy against the, the exploiters and the hackers. Well, for Battlefield 2, we really want to keep the sense of arcade gameplay. So for us, a key design challenge was how to take these rather complex modern weapon systems and extrapolate kind of arcade gameplay mechanics out of them. And we've done that um, quite successfully. So for example, there's nothing in the game that requires more than a, than a click and shoot, click and point, you know, and shoot to steer the, uh, the ordinance to the target. Well, for us, pushing the, the envelope forward on, on team play was, it was an area of focus. We really wanted to revolutionize the first-person shooter space in that regard. So we built in, a, we built in a, several layers of features to, um, to allow team play to happen much more naturally. Um, sitting at the top, I mentioned, of this digital chain of command is the battlefield commander. <laughs> he plays the game in a fundamentally different way than the guy who's running around the game uh, shooting his gun in a first-person shooter experience. He's actually looking top-down on the map much like a real-time strategy game, clicking on his squad leaders, issuing orders to attack here, defend here, and he's dropping artillery strikes, he's calling in satellite sweeps. Then at the next layer below him is the squad leader. The squad leader plays inside the game, inside the first-person shooter. He can form a squad and people can join him. What he can do is he can issue orders to his squad mates to move around the world and do certain things. <coughs> when he does so, uh, 
For example, a can of smoke will appear in the world. We call that popping smoke, and that'll that will appear to other people in the world as a as this visual signal of where to go and what to do. He can communicate up the uh, command chain using voice over IP, and the Balco commander can communicate back down the command chain using voice over IP. So you have this this digital chain of command that's linked together with uh, with VoIP and uh, and, and on-screen orders. So for the PC, it's really important that the that, that VoIP works as plug and play. Just plug it in the back of your of your of your box, and it'll work. And that's how, first of all, that's how we want to get to on, on the PC for Battlefield 2. Beyond that, we organize voice over IP communication around this chain of command. So you can't just you know speak over your headphone and have the whole server hear you. That's not realistic um, to the battlefield. Instead. Uh, we've segmented up the voice over IP broadcast to be within a squad or the squad leader communicating to the battlefield commander to keep it uh, uh, much more um, uh, centralized around the squad leaders and the commander. Supporting the mod community was an area of focus for us with Battlefield 2 and our strategy. Now, if you think back to Battlefield 1942, we released tools to the community like six to eight months after the product shipped. With Battlefield Vietnam, they were on the disc itself. With Battlefield 2, we're actually releasing tools before the product ships. <laughs> so before Battlefield 2 gets the shelves, the community will have the option, will have the opportunity to use the Battlefield 2 editor, which we're releasing. That includes an animation editor, an effects editor, an object editor, um, properties editor, and people can start using that now to get going on their mods. Uh, backing that up is a set of uh, import and export tools um, from Maya and Max uh, that allows people to create their assets in these in these. Um, rendering packages and export them into the Battlefield 2 editor. Some people will have to, uh, to re-export a lot of their, their models and equipment uh, into the Battlefield 2 editor, so it will be kind of a restart for a lot of these folks. But at the same time, we've brought on a mod community coordinator, his name is Lawrence Brown. He's the fellow who built the uh, Pirates mod for Battlefield 1942, so he's very He's very good at uh, manipulating um, the editor and he understands the technical aspects and the artistic aspects to creating a mod. His very purpose on the franchise team is to, is to answer the questions of these mod teams and kind of bootstrap them over key problems they're having to get so they can get their mod done more quickly. The Desert Combat Team, which is known as Trauma Studios, um, were acquired by Digital Illusions a couple months ago, so they're part of the DICE corporate entity now. So they're supporting Battlefield 2 both in terms of direct engineering support by having some of, their, some of their engineers on the ground in Stockholm. Prior to that, they were helping us with a lot of uh, prototyping ideas. So for example, we prototyped uh, many of the Battlefield Commander and team play features within the Battlefield 1942 engine. It was existing technology. We could quickly prototype and iterate on it and express our key ideas, learn from it, and then integrate it in the Battlefield 2 engine. And they worked with us very closely on that. I mentioned before um, the addition of Lawrence Brown, uh, the fellow that created the Pirates mod for Battlefield 1942. He's on our franchise team uh, full time now. Um, he's running a website, he answers questions from that website, he answers emails. Um, you can email him at, L, at lbrownea.com. Um, so we're really, really committed to, uh, to helping these mod teams uh, express their creativity using Battlefield 2 as their platform.